All right, so a few months ago, I did a tutorial on how to create, or a couple years ago, actually, wow. Um, I did a tutorial on how to create uh, folder shortcuts uh, from Automator, so you can use them anywhere in the system and get anywhere in the system. And I actually had keyboard shortcuts as well and all this stuff, and it was really cool. Uh, a couple problems. Uh, number one, video encoding is messed up, so it's kind of blurry. Sorry about that. And uh, number two, uh, this isn't so helpful when you're more of a terminal person and you like using the keyboard a lot. Or even if you're not a terminal person, this might be of interest to you because it's just kind of another cool way of doing things. And I think it's a bit easier. So let's get started. Uh, the way you start off is you open terminal and just make sure that it works. Make sure you can open terminal. It's located in applications and scroll down to utilities and it should be, oh, not virtual box, whoopsie. Um, scroll down to utilities and it should be in that folder. Um, otherwise you can just search spotlight terminal or you can go to Launchpad and type terminal. Three different options as per usual. Once you're in, uh, yours is gonna look a little bit different than mine. Mine just looks like this because I have a custom theme. I'll do a video on that later on. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to go to Safari and download an application called Sublime Text. The reason why you need this is because, um, I'll explain it later, but basically this is just a super fancy text editor. Um, it also kind of helps you with uh, syntax coloring and it, it just shows you your code files a bit nicer. If you're a programmer, you should already know about this. If you're not a programmer, it's just super fancy text edit. So once you download that, uh, you need to copy and paste a teensy tiny uh, little command into terminal that will make it so you can open files from the terminal directly in Sublime Text. So basically what this means is, for example, let's say I'm on my desktop. Uh, let's actually go to the desktop. Let's do this. So we'll cd to the desktop and let's create a file. I'll use the touch command. We'll be using this later. So it's kind of a little like pre prequel. Um, so let's create a file called, let's so do the command touch and we'll name it like test.txt, right? And let's create a file called test.txt on our desktop. As you can see, wow, it's like magic. Um, then what we do is if we want to open in text edit, for example, we would just type open dash a text edit and then test.txt and it opens in that. So this is the file, right? Same thing if we can just double click on it and it would open in text edit as well. So this is basically how you do it for any normal application. To save time with Sublime Text, you can actually paste this command in. Um, I'm just going to copy paste it here. It will be in the video description. All the commands I'll be entering will be in the video description. Um, so just kind of copy and paste that. And basically what this does, I'll do a quick little explanation, is this creates something called a symlink. Uh, you'll be familiar with that if you've seen my other tutorial, shameless plug. Uh, for Sublime Text within this super special directory within the application uh, that basically says whenever you type the word Sublime and then a file name, open that file in Sublime. So uh, let's let's do it. So first thing we want to do is we want to actually uh, create something called a bash profile file. Uh, basically what, actually let's do that first then I'll explain. So the way you do it is you make sure you're in your user directory. You can do that by typing cd space and then the tilde key right below the escape key, hold shift, press that key, um, then forward slash, and then press enter. This will move you into your um, users directory. If you type pwd, you can make sure of this and make sure it says slash users slash and then whatever your username is that you log into the computer. Now, once you're into this directory, you want to create the bash profile file. And you do this by using touch space and then dot bash underscore profile and then press enter. The reason why the dots there is because that kind of hides it and um, it is technically sort of like a system file. So your operating system doesn't want you to see it generally. So that's why it's hiding in here. But because we're in the terminal, we can mess around with it. Um, and bash underscore profile is just the name of the file that the operating system looks for. The reason why it's called bash is because bash stands for born again shell, spelled born again shell, I think. Um, and basically uh, the born again shell is this, what you're typing in right now. This whole thing is the born again shell. It's terminal basically. Um, it's uh, There are other variations of it and other different versions, but this is the main one that's included with OS 10. So this is basically a configuration file for the bash shell. Pretty cool, right? So if you're familiar with Minecraft servers, uh, this is the equivalent to the server.properties file. Uh, if you're, I don't know, do some JavaScript stuff, it's con similar to another type of configuration. If you play Tribes Ascend, it's similar to the uh, any file, but who plays Tribes Ascend? Um, so sorry, just some analogies there. Uh, just configuration file, tells it what to do. So let's go into that file. Uh, we'll type in sublime space and then dot bash underscore profile, because we want to open this file in sublime, press enter. Uh, it opened on this other thing because my computer hates me. 
So now that we're in here, uh, my Sublime looks a bit different from yours because uh, I have a custom theme, which I'll create another video that goes into how to do that and stuff. But um, yeah, so just it should look somewhat similar. It should just look like a window with a little one and cursor and stuff. Yep, you get the point. So let's just close that other file in the background. Now, what we do is now we have some fun. So I'm going to show off just by creating a really basic example, and then I'll include about, what, five or six things? Yeah, five or six things, cool commands that I've found over the years. So uh, let's say, for example, that you are in Terminal and you find yourself going into a specific directory a lot. Let's say you want to go to, I don't know, just an example on my desktop. Uh, if I go to des my desktop folder and then audio and then sheet music and I'm sick and tired of like double clicking and then moving the window and then clicking and then going in here. I just want to type a terminal command that takes me right here. You can do that. So the way you do this is you type in in Sublime alias space and then whatever the command that you want to enter to do this process basically it's like a macro but formally called an alias uh, so let's say you just want to call this uh, sheet music and then type equals without a space and then quote single quote without a space uh, notice how sublime actually added an end quote there that's because in programming you usually want a beginning and end quote so it just kind of tries to be nice and do stuff for you so there's that uh, so then you type between the two single quotes cd space um, in this case, I want to go to my desktop, so I type the tilde key again, forward slash, desktop, forward slash, um, audio, forward slash, sheet, backslash, backslash, space, music. Um, the backslash says, hey, sheet music is one word just with a space. If you don't put the backslash, it's going to think desktop audio sheet is its own folder and the music is this other kind of random thing. Um, but if you type backslash, it's like, hey, this is one folder, and it does that. So quick little breakdown uh, alias the name of the alias the command you want to do equals so it assigns it and within the single quotes this is basically the command you want to do it or the command you want it to do whenever you type sheet music you could just type this command in terminal every single time but that kind of gets annoying you just want a simpler thing to type right right so now what we do is we save the file and we go into terminal and we uh, press command T this creates a new tab uh, if you want if you want to be really formal about it, you can go file or shell, new window, new window settings or whatever and create a new window. Because you need to create a new window, new tab or quit and restart terminal in order to refresh this bash profile. If you don't, it's just going to kind of not recognize it because you need to basically create a new terminal instance, like a new tab, new window or just close and reopen terminal in order to get it to refresh and reread this file. So now that I've created a new tab here, um, remember this is the old tab. I just created a new tab. Now I can try to run this command and see if it worked. Um, let's type in sheet music. If I could spell. Ta-da! I'm in the folder. I can type pwd to make sure. And yep, that looks like it. So let's mess around a bit more. Uh, let's say, for example, I did something wrong. Uh, let's say I typed in a weird command. Or let's say, for example, I forgot this extra backslash on the end. And I save it open a new terminal instance, look, it gives me errors. So it does do error checking for you, which is nice. So it kind of helps you figure out if you did anything wrong, what it was. So I'll just add that quote and then close, reopen that terminal instance, and there we go. So um, other examples, things you could do, so you can do alias space, um, I don't know, let's create an alias that prints out uh, some stuff to the screen. Uh, so for example, we can do, let's name this uh, print stuff equals, we're going to use something called the echo command, um, like echo, 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 there we go, space, and then whatever you want to do in quotes, double quotes. So let's say for example, I want to type in hello world, right, make sure you have this Thing you want to type out in double quotes but the whole command is still in single quotes so now you whoops didn't mean to do that uh, let's ignore that uh, let's open a new terminal instance got no errors and now we just type print stuff ta-da type that hello world um, you can also concatenate um, different commands which basically means you can do multiple commands at once with one alias you don't have to type it in again and again and again like if I wanted to type in print stuff five times I don't have to type in print stuff print stuff whatever you can actually do this multiple times uh, to do this within your command within the single quotes uh, you can just press space and then do double ampersand space and then another command you want to do uh, this could be the same command so I could just do echo hello world and if I create a new terminal instance and I type it again, print stuff, if I could spell, 
Ta-da, now it does it twice. You can also just enter some random command. So an example way, it could just be any command. So this ter this uh, operator basically means it's a Boolean and, if you want the fancy word. Um, it basically means just do two commands. Uh, you can actually do this really cool thing where, for example, if we go back to my sheet music example, um, after the CD, we can do the double ampersand, or space, double ampersand, space, and then type in, for example, um, echo, space, um, CD, or now you are in the sheet music directory. Yay. Again, make sure that it's double quote, single quote at the end. And uh, oh yeah, by the way, in Sublime Text, whenever you see this thing, it says, hey, you got to buy it. I'll just press cancel. You can buy it if you want, but it's kind of fun. Um, so all right. Now, once you do this, uh, you can create your terminal instance and run sheet music. This is just my example. You would have to use your own folders in your case. So for example, if you had a folder in here called, I don't know, plants, because you liked plants, and then within that folder, you had another folder called like, uh, I don't know, um, what's a plant? Royal palm tree. Um, and within there, you want to do that, you would change this to reflect that. This is just an example showing you, hey, I just this is just my example. So uh, let's actually type sheet music and see what happens. Ta-da! Now it says you are in the sheet music directory. So it's like a nice little welcome. So the first one is an alias that will basically do a speed test for you. So basically what it does is it tells you how fast your internet connection is, which is extremely useful. So what you want to type is, uh, it's actually kind of long and annoying to type. So I'm just going to post all these in the description. You can copy and paste them in your bash profile. So how does that sound? So let's copy and paste it. The first one, speed test. And let's run through a little bit of what it does. Um, this runs a command called wget or wget. Uh, this basically downloads stuff. Uh, the dash o or the dash capital o command says, "Hey, where do you want to download it to?" Um, the dev null is a directory that actually it's like a black hole. It's a directory that doesn't really exist. So whenever you write something to dev null, it just basically deletes it immediately. It's actually kind of cool. And then this is just a link to some arbitrary test file that has a bunch of random stuff in a zip file. Um, so it basically scans it and lets you know how fast it goes. So basically, if we run this, uh, let's create a new terminal instance again to refresh this and we type speed test. So now it's going to connect to it and boom, look, it shows me a speed. So I can see, um, hey, it's doing all this networking stuff. If you could figure out this networking stuff, that's awesome. Um, if it tells you where it's saving it to, it tells you how big the file is, so it's 11 megabytes. And then it says, hey, this is a directory. This is the progress, and then that's how big the file is. That's the current speed, and that's the amount of time it took. And then this is just kind of a verification thing with a timestamp. Pretty cool, right? So you can use this whenever you think your internet's being kind of slow, or you know, just anything like that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, this one is actually an extension of a previous tutorial. Again, wow, I am just outdoing myself in every regard. First, the shortcut folders, then now, drum roll please, screensaver background as your desktop wallpaper. Oh yeah. So this one actually requires two commands. Um, kind of a bit cheeky there, but let's copy and paste the next one in. Uh, this first command, uh, again, you can rename these aliases and call them anything you want. So I could call this like screensaver, super cool, awesome background thing on desktop. But I don't want to type that. I can just type SBG. So basically, um, alias, again, command, create an alias, call it SBG, um, and then go to this super long directory, run whatever it is that's in that directory, the certain file name, screensaver engine, and then add this flag to it. Basically what it does is it creates a screen your screensaver on your desktop wallpaper as your desktop wallpaper. And then this other command, QSBG, um, again you could rename anything you want. Um, this basically runs this command kill all screensaver engine. Kill all is just a command that kills a certain process on your computer. Um, and then screensaver engine is just what this thing was called. So if we save our bash profile, recreate a new terminal instance, uh, as you can see it's creating a lot of tabs. If you want you can just close the terminal window and then open it again, and now you're free of tabs. Uh, so let's try it out. Let's type in SBG. Boom, isn't that cool? So I actually have this cool little screensaver that will just show this kind of like stock um, film from various like scenic stuff, and I really like it because it's pretty. Um, but yeah, isn't this so cool? So like you can like move stuff around your desktop over it and all this other stuff, and yeah, it's awesome. Only issue, it does use up a bit of your CPU and your battery, so I wouldn't recommend just kind of turning this off, turning this on all the time. Um, now you'll notice a slight issue. Whenever I 
Oh, never mind. Sorry. You have to press enter to get back into the prompt. Um, otherwise, it's just kind of stuck in the previous command. Um, so you notice the slight issue. It's kind of still running, and I don't want it to. So now I type QSBG, as I said in my bash profile right here. Press enter, and it quits and goes back to your normal desktop. So finally, uh, let's create one that'll save our lives, sublime lives a little bit easier. So this one, actually, I can type out from memory because it's pretty short. I lie, I have it on my other monitor. Um, so if we type in alias space sub equals quote sublime, take a guess what this does. You guessed 50% chance, you have a 50% chance of guessing that correctly. I don't know because I can't see or hear you at the moment. Um, it's because this is a video. Uh, so now what this command basically does is this, instead of typing sublime, we could just type sub. It's more than half of the characters shorter. It's only three characters versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. Actually, it says on the bottom. See, that's cool. Um, I don't know why I counted that. So um, now let's create a new terminal instance and make sure it works. Uh, let's try, I don't know, let's go to my desktop. Let's try opening that uh, test.txt file we created earlier. So we'll minimize sublime text. Let's try to open this in sublime. We'll type sub test.txt. Boom. That's awesome, isn't it? I actually use that one daily. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more terminal based stuff. Uh, can't really be what you really want to be, punk. Uh, looking at me, trying to be like Mona Lisa. I'm better than never. You just let us, I'm chilling like a pizza. See me like a minute, spend it, spend it in a minute, get it. Everyone spend it fast like a pizza. This is a prison, I lose it, I know other questions. Run up the grid, I'll give me suggestions. I just move, flew, what I become. Something dismissive, they don't want to listen. I tell them my story, they act like it's boring. I see them, I'm more than my daddies. I know they just want to see glory. I'm stuck up in the morning. Oh,